Flat Earth Clues, Part 3, The Map Makers. This is part of a series of clues that can help you get your head around both the design of the flat earth system we live in and who has been involved in the deception to hide it from you. This clue looks into the USGS, otherwise known as the map makers of the world, and a few surprising things that they and others have in common with the flat earth idea. All the reference links are provided in the description below, and I encourage you to check them out. For those of you outside the United States, USGS stands for United States Geological Survey, a scientific branch of the U.S. government. Formed in 1879, and with the help of the ever-expanding American Empire, they quickly became the pre premier map makers of the known world. Currently, they have around 9,000 employees and an annual budget of over a billion dollars a year. They also have extensive science departments covering biology, geography, geology, hydrology, and many programs tied to them. Their motto since the 1990s has been science for a changing world, and I'm going to show you how true that really is. What does this large, really boring government group have to do with the flat earth? To understand that, you have to look into their origins, which is in geography. To do this, you'll need to open another page that specializes in maps. The maps you see in this video are from Wikipedia, but there are others you can reference as well. The wiki list of map projections isn't much to look at as a whole, although there are a number of interesting takes in the world view. Not only do they have just about every perspective when it comes to the land we live on, but some detailed information on where the map originated, including name type, the origin or creator, and the year the map perspective was proposed. Now some of these will be very familiar, especially the ones that you would see on your classroom wall. There are a number of variations here, but the one that has been debated on recently would be this one, the Gauls Peters, which accurately shows the size difference between the continents, the most obvious clue being that the white continent of Greenland is actually tiny compared to Africa. But I digress. If you keep going down through all the different shapes, you'll get into circular maps, but only one of these is a top-down perspective that shows the continents in the center surrounded by an unbroken ring of ice. In wiki, it's called the azimuthal equidistant, and just to make it easier, I'm going to abbreviate and call it AE for short. Why is this map so interesting? Well, if you're looking at the wiki page, you'll spot a few reasons. The first is that in the notes section of the map, and I quote, used by the USGS in the National Atlas of the United States. It also mentions that it is used as the emblem of the United Nations. Of all the maps on this screen, it is the only one that references a group of any kind. And if you keep this page open and navigate over to the Flat Earth section of Wiki, you'll notice towards the bottom of the page a similar map. I've referenced it here, and you can tell quite easily it's identical, but not referenced or linked as the AE model. To make things even more strange, we go back to the USGS model, and you see that it was first proposed a thousand years ago, and you may think, well, that's a bad link. So you compare it with the person who proposed it, and you get this guy, Al Biruni. Who was Al Biruni? Well, he lived around a thousand years ago and was considered one of the greatest scholars of his era, schooled in multiple sciences. Have you ever heard of him? I hadn't. Maybe it's multiple bad references in Wiki. Well, no, because NASA knows who he is and named this moon crater after him. So why is the USGS using a version of the world map designed by a thousand-year-old Persian scientist? Because it's correct. That's why. So to be clear, let's compare them again. The United Nations flag, the USGS official map of the Earth, and the Flat Earth model. All identical, but one isn't recognized and instead ridiculed as an outdated look at the world. And this is one of those political quandaries that the authority gets stuck in. The short version is this. The government is on the same page as the Flat Earth, 
but they can't admit it, even in confidence. We know the Earth isn't flat, they say, but it really is. We know you use the same map as we do, but ours is just an image. And anyone who says differently is obviously crazy. It makes you wonder how long the USGS has been using that model as an official reference. The United Nations started using it for their logos in 1945, and then made some final adjustments in 1947. And the UN flag also raises a few questions, like, why isn't Antarctica represented on the map? Is it supposed to be assumed in the outer circle, or perhaps the spiky olive branches on the outside? They don't mention it anywhere online. And this is what I'd like to focus on. The gaps. The holes in the plot. The unanswered questions. The USGS using the same map as the Flat Earth, but not saying why. Not recognizing it. Or that you can't link the very same image from the Flat Earth wiki back to the actual AE definition of the projection. The authority figured out in the 1950s all of the borders of our enclosed world, and have done a great job hiding it over the decades. But the world's a complex place, and there are clues out there just lying around. I think it's time you saw some of them. So do some of your own research, and ask questions. Please feel free to email me at msergeant23 at comcast.net, or 303-494-6631.